story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. It's a big one. Homes, buildings, churches, jails, the suburbs, the downtown. There's more of it. Orchards and movie studios. The old and the new. A million cars, two million people. Most of them work for a living. Some of them steal. When they do, my job gets tougher. I'm a cop. It was Monday, October 23rd. We were working the day watch out of narcotics detail. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Captain Kearney. My name's Friday. It happened in the early morning. The pharmacy, All Saints Hospital, was robbed of its entire store of narcotics, $10,000 worth. In a matter of hours, the thief could spread his haul of dope from one end of the city to the other. We didn't know who he was, we didn't know where he was, but we had to get him. Yes? Police officer, sister. We'd like to see Sister Mary Benedict. I'm she. Mother Superior sent us down to see you, sister. We're investigating the narcotics robbery. Oh, yes, there have been quite a few policemen here in the past hour. I believe it was the fingerprint men who just left. Just a minute, I have their card. Yes, Layton Fingerprints Division. Still all in the boys from Layton Print? Yes, that's right. Sergeant Harlenstall. Well, sister, we're the investigating officers assigned to the case. This is Sergeant Romero, and my name's Friday. Are you a lieutenant? No, I'm a sergeant. Now, I wonder if you could start right from the beginning and tell us what you know about the narcotics burglary. Well, after mass, I went to breakfast, and then I came downstairs to open up the pharmacy. You keep the pharmacy locked overnight? Uh, yes, always. We always assign an intern on night duty. He has a key in case there are any medicines needed during the night. He's authorized to issue what may be needed upon the doctor's request. Uh, who else has a key to the pharmacy, sister? There are just three keys. Mother Superior has one on her desk. We have one for the intern on duty. And uh, I have one here on my chain. I see. Would you like to go on, please? When I got down here this morning and started to unlock the door, I found it ajar. There were no lights on. I snapped on that wall switch. That one there. That's when I saw Mr. Lyons. That's the intern? Yes. He was unconscious on the floor. I could see that his head had been cut. He was bleeding profusely. What would you do then? I called Mother Superior. She came right down. Dr. Spencer was summoned. He came in and started administering aid to Mr. Lyons here on the floor. That's when you first found out the narcotics were missing? No, not just at the moment. Both Mother Superior and myself were quite worried about Mr. Lyons' condition. It was really Mother Superior who first noticed that the narcotics safe had been tampered with. Would you like to go on, please? Upon checking the safe, we found that our entire store of narcotics had been taken. Everything. That's the narcotics safe over here, is it? Yes, that's it. Don't touch that, Mr. Friday. No? No, never. Nothing is to be touched until the police have completed their investigation. Clues. Well, we're the police, sister. Do you have all the clues you need? Well, I wouldn't know, but the men from Leighton Fingerprints have dusted everything here, so it's perfectly all right to touch things now. That would be Mr. Holland Stall and Miss Men? Yes, that's right. Oh, I didn't know. We understand you have the inventory list. Yes, I have it right here on my desk. We keep a running inventory, so that's the exact amount of what is missing. Yes, ma'am. Cocaine and morphine. No bird's eye, Joe. Big haul, huh? Looks like about 10,000 worth. We'd like to have a copy of this inventory, sister. Would you take the carbon, please? I'd like to keep the original for my monthly files. Surely. Thank you. Outside of this intern line, does nobody else saw who it was? No, Mother Superior and I interrogated everyone. We made a thorough investigation on our own. I took notes. Is that so? Yes, that's the way Father Brown does it. Father Brown? Yes, he's an expert detective. Brown? You wouldn't mean Thad Brown? No, Father Brown. Father Brown? I didn't know you had your own detective. Oh, he's not a regular detective. He's more like Mother Superior and myself. Is that right? Yes, he's in England. Solves some very difficult cases. Wait, I'll show you. See, here it is. 
Fine Water and Song, another exciting Father Brown mystery by G.K. Chesterton. Oh, uh, uh -huh. I have all but one of the Father Brown stories. Mother Superior has it. I get it after she finishes it. What's the condition of the intern, sister, have you heard? He's resting comfortably. Dr. Spencer said he'd be all right. Had to have nine stitches taken in his scalp. We'd like to talk to him as soon as we can. I'm sure that'll be all right. I don't need to tell you that we all think this is a terrible thing. Yes, sister, it is. All those narcotics, whoever took them will distribute them, won't they? Well, that's our guess, sister. The stuff will be sold to addicts. What makes a dope addict? How do they get started? Why do they do it? I don't know, sister. They give you a lot of reason. None of them good. None of them good. And for a few moments of what? Tonight they have it, and tomorrow nothing. It's about the size of it, sister. The stars are setting, and the caravan starts for the dawn of nothing. The Bible. No, Omar Khayyam. We went upstairs and talked with intern James Lyons. Since he was attacked from behind, he didn't see the man who slugged him. He could tell us nothing. The entire hospital staff was screened thoroughly. They could add nothing to what we already knew. Somewhere in the city of Los Angeles was the answer. As in all narcotics cases, speed is the prime factor. Whoever held those narcotics wouldn't waste any time diluting or cutting it and making it ready for quick sale. Our job was to stop them. 7.05 a.m., we checked in with Sergeant Stahl at Leighton Prince. The safe was clean, not a print on it. Not a foreign print anywhere in the room. Couldn't be cleaner. Yeah. You didn't get anything on your end, huh? No, nothing. Gentlemen. Captain. They picked one up. Who is he? Junker by the name of Fabe Kellogg. He's really seeing Steve, but he's coming out of it. What's the story on him? Wallace and Hunt picked him up downtown L.A. Thought at first it was a 390, but they couldn't raise him. Where have they got him now? Squadron. Let's go talk to him. Check your letters, Stahl. Where'd they pick him up, Skipper? Sitting in a parked car fourth and Broadway. Wallers figured he must be geared up, so they rolled up his sleeve to look for spike marks. They found him. Anything on it? There were two vials of almonds, seat beside him. Prescription stuff. Hey, have you got that list of serial numbers from the hospital? Right here. Good. Fine. Come on. Hi, Ted. Walters. Yeah, Captain. Here's a list of serial numbers on that hospital heist. Do you want to check it against the vials you found in this car? Yeah, I got them right over here. Okay, come on. How you feeling, babe? All right. This is Friday in Romero, Narcotics Division. I see him. You want to tell us about it? Nothing to tell. Living kind of high, aren't you? No more than usual. That's not the way I get it. You're scoring good prescription stuff. Birthday present from a friend. Who is it? I want to keep his friendship. Who's your connection, babe? I don't know. You know that morphine we picked out of your car is hot? Isn't all of it? The hospital pharmacy was knocked over this morning. If the numbers on those vials of yours match up, you're in a real jam. No numbers on them. You might as well tell us where you got it. It isn't going to be a long wait, Kellogg. As soon as we get a check on those serial numbers, you can play hero all afternoon. That'll be on the 12th floor of the county jail, babe. You won't have to stay there long, either. The minute you put one foot in that courtroom, the judge will throw everything he's got at you. For two bottles of drugstore stuff? Burglary, Kellogg, $10,000. This is good, but two bottles ain't worth that much. You feel pretty good now, but you'll get a yen on. You won't help me. You never do. When's the last time you helped us? I helped you guys a lot. Don't you remember the Frank Smith plan? No. You're kidding. Isn't it St. Louis? Seeing Steve. Yeah. Don't kid me along. This is Kansas City. Or is it St. Louis? You're in Los Angeles, babe. Los Angeles, California. Don't kid me along. Marty Clenard wouldn't do that to me. Who's Clenard? 11th and Baltimore. Hangs out down near the Continental Hotel. That's in Kansas City. Marty Clenard, tough cop, gave me a floater out of town. That's why I came here to St. Louis. You're in Los Angeles, babe. Got it? Los Angeles. I know, you told me. See you in a minute, Captain. Yeah. Joe. Stay with him, Romero. Right. Well, that's it. Checks out, huh? Yeah, someone cut through the serial number stamps on him, but you can still make them out. Two vials of morphine we found in Kellogg's car from the hospital pharmacy. 
Yeah, thanks. Let's try it again, Joe. All right. All right, now, babe, cut out the jokes. Those two vials you had came from the hospital. Numbers check out. No numbers on those vials. How do you know? You probably never even looked at them. Oh, yeah, I looked. No numbers on them. We found them all right. I don't see how you could read them. I couldn't. Why not? Somebody scratched them off. Who, oh, babe? You wouldn't know them. Try us. How much heat do I have to stand if I take it alone? Plenty. There was an intern slug on that job. Hurt pretty bad. He's going to tag you for assault, too. Once more, what's the count? Goes like this, babe. First degree burglary, five years to life. Assault with a deadly weapon, one to ten. Violation of a state narcotics act, up to six years. Now you can add, they'll lose you up there. If you can get a real yen on by that time, there's no buzzing up at Q. I can't go that route. Where'd you get the stuff? I'd rather be a Fagan than spend 50 years at the joint. All right, you convinced us. Where'd you get it? Anybody turned Fagan before they spend 50 years at Q? No, I can't go that route. Where'd you get it, babe? From some joy popper. Who? I gave him 500 bucks. Clean me. Who? Come to me passing himself off as a croaker. I could spot a guy been hitting speed balls a mile away. He was no croaker. What was his name? He was scoring good somewhere. All that Cecil and Mary. Now I know where he got it. What was his name, babe? He's a bit player in pictures. Learned Castle. Where is he? Yuma, Arizona, on location. How could he be on location when you bought that stuff from him this morning? He hopped the plane this morning. He was on his way. Runner Castle. Picture actor, that right? You got it? All right, run it down. 9.14 a.m. We checked the name Leonard Castle through R&I. He had no previous criminal record. We checked the phone book for local casting. Dunbar, 38211. Hello, this is Sergeant Friday, Los Angeles Police Department. We're checking on a man by the name of Leonard Castle. Is he registered with you? Yes, ma'am. Leonard Castle. Uh-huh, thank you. Checking it now. Uh-huh. Is he working now, do you know? I see. Uh, just a minute, please. What was that again? 1626, all right. Thank you very much. Get an address? Yeah. He's there now. <laughs> Local casting gave us the information that Leonard Castle was currently working on a picture at Sound Stages Incorporated. They also gave us his home address. Sergeants Long and Hunt from Narcotics went on immediate stakeout at Castle's home. Ben and I drove out to the studio and checked in at the main gate. It was 9.28 a.m. We showed them our identification. We were issued a pass to Sound Stage 4. There's Stage 1. Stage 4 should be right down there. Yeah. It's a good sized lot. Sure is. I think Kellogg knew what he's talking about. I don't know. We'll know in a couple of minutes. Unusual a joy popper pulling a job like this. Well, they all got to start somewhere. Yeah, sure. Good way to get around the movie lot. Yeah. That's stage four. Yeah. You better hold it up a minute. They're shooting. Oh, yeah. Kind of cold, isn't it? Yeah, my wife told me I should wear a top coat today. I wouldn't believe it. Oh, there you are. I don't care. Come on, here. Dan, call Dan Castle, will you? These fellows want to see him. Okay. Leonard Castle. Leonard Castle. He'll be here in a minute. Thank you. Did you call me, Dan? Yes, these gentlemen want to see you. Oh, thanks. You want to see me? Yes, yeah, your name Leonard Castle? That's right. 
police officers or someplace yeah. where we could talk. Well, is this all right? I gotta stick close to my pain in the next shot. You know a fellow by the name of Babe Kellogg? No. He says he knows you. No, I never heard of him. You sure? Put us on a bell clip. All right, hold the work. Simmer down, everybody. Quiet. We'll have to hold it a minute. They're lining up a shot. Whoa, whoa, that's got it. Back to go with this junior off over here. Okay. Let me have a nicky dink right here. Carry my left, will you, Steve? Say, uh, Harry. Yeah? And Mr. Mulhall, cross us over to the table. You can help me out of this. Will you uh, bring this one down about two points on the dimmer? That's done. Don, you got it? Got it. Right. All ready, Henry. All right, let's try it. Bob, watch that mic shadow. We're getting it on the wall. Am I out now? That's fine. We're clear. Okay, Henry. Let's make one. Turn them over. We're rolling. Scene 33, take 10. Action. Hello. All right, Chief. As soon as I get all the clues, I'll be right in. What I found, Lieutenant. A piece of glass from that broken window, eh? That's right, and it's plastered with fingerprints. Yeah, we got our man. Stop. All right, boy, let's put this door up here on the barn door, will you please? You never heard of Babe Kellogg, huh? That's right. Where were you at 5.30 this morning, Castle? In bed. We've got men out at your place checking. What's it all about? Somebody robbed the pharmacy at All Saints Hospital this morning, slugged the intern, and made off with over $10,000 worth of high-grade narcotics. We find out you were in bed at 5.30, you're clear. Yeah, well, I was. Anybody to back up that alibi? Landlady, I guess she'd know. What time she'd generally get up? I don't know. Why? Well, she couldn't very well back you up. She was still asleep. She's usually up early. But you said you didn't know what time she gets up. Well, I'm mad I don't usually know. But you knew this morning? No. And you don't know Babe Kellogg? All right, let's simmer down, everybody. Let's keep it quiet. Yeah. Quiet. Yours. Okay. What do you read on that, Junior, Harry? A little less than 100. Make it a little hotter. Make it a little hotter, Jack. Whoa, that's it. Turn them over. We're rolling. See? Scene 33, take 11. Action. Hello? All right, Chief. As soon as I get all the clues, I'll be right in. What I found, Lieutenant. Broken window, eh? That's right. And it's plastered with prints. Yeah, we got our man. Cut. Henry. He's a tough director, but he's a good one. Want a cigarette? Thank you. How long you been doing this kind of work, Castle? Oh, six, seven years. What pictures you been in? I don't think you'd have noticed. Mostly small parts. What kind of parts you got in this picture? I play a cop. What would you like to do? What in this picture? No, I mean, what's your ambition? You gonna stay in pictures? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to get a few bigger parts if I could. Pretty tough to try to sell yourself to a producer if he can't see you on film. Mm -hmm. Money's pretty good, though, isn't it? Depends. Different deal in each picture you do. You have an agent? No. I did have, but he wasn't doing anything for me. I let him go. I'm not represented now. Pretty hard to build any kind of a name without an agent, isn't it? Depends. If you can keep up a good front. Nice car, it's all it counts in this town. You really believe that, do you? Don't you? I don't know much about it, I'm not an actor. You said you didn't know Babe Kellogg at all, didn't you? I don't know him. You said you saw your landlady at 5.30 this morning. No, I didn't say that. Do you have a car? No, I don't. But you told us you had a car. No, I didn't tell you that, did I? Well, you said something about keeping up a good front, nice car. Isn't that what you said? Oh, sure, I have a car. I don't know what I was thinking about. I have a car. Uh -huh. I thought you said you had a car. Well, this picture I could drive you crazy. I don't know what I'm saying half the time. And maybe you made a mistake about Babe Kellogg. Do you know him? No, I'm sure about that. I don't know any Babe Carson. Kellogg. Kellogg, yeah, well, I don't know him. Do you mind showing us your wallet? What for? You want to see my identification? Can we see the wallet, please? All right. All right, hold it down. Right. Quiet. No, you hold it. Open it up. Speed. Scene 33, take 12. Action. 
Hello? All right, Chief. As soon as I get all the clues, I'll be right in. Look what I found, Lieutenant. Piece of broken window, huh? That's right, and it's plastered with fingerprints. Yeah, we got our man. Cut. All right, let's see how much money you got in your wallet, Castle. No, you hold it. Just count it for us. There it is. How about the rest of it? Oh. I didn't see it. Count it. It's just a couple of hundred. Count it. All right. Let's see. Uh... Well, I can see four fifties right there on top. That's two hundred, isn't it? Didn't know I had this much. Two more tens and a five. It's five hundred and twenty-five dollars, Cass. Yeah. Doing pretty well in this picture, aren't you? It's not all picture money. All right. You can put your wallet away. Yeah, thanks. If you didn't make the money on the picture, where'd you get it? I played a little cards last night. You played pretty late? Yeah, pretty late. Weren't you tired this morning? No. Not even when you got up at 5.30? Did I say I got up at 5.30? Now, you listen, Castle. You don't know what you said, but one thing is sure, you're lying to us. You know Babe Kellogg? You know I'm well enough to sell him two vials of high-grade morphine. You're wrong about that. All right, then. You set us straight. Kellogg says he paid you $500 for the stuff. You got over 500 in your wallet. That's more than you need for lunch money. Now, it could be a coincidence. You set us straight. You're wrong. Where'd you get that money? Turn him! Turn him! We're rolling. Speed. Scene 33, take 13. Action. Hello? All right, Chief. As soon as I get all the clues, I'll be right in. Look what I found, Lieutenant. Broken window, eh? That's right. It's plastered with fingerprints. Yeah, we got our man. Cut. Where'd you get the money, Castle? I told you, I played cards. It won't do. You got the keys to your car? I can't leave. We'll get you excused. We want to look at your car. I don't do that. All right, then. Do you know Babe Kellogg? I don't know. Burn him! The rolling. Feed. Scene 33, take 14. Action. Hello? All right, Chief. As soon as I get all the clues, I'll be right in. Look what I found, Lieutenant. Piece of broken window, eh? That's right, and it's plastered with fingerprints. Yeah, we got our man. Cut. Print the last one only. Hold it right for a lily. You know Babe Kellogg? Do you know him? Yeah. I know him. You robbed that hospital this morning, didn't you? I needed it. I needed the money I had to have, but I owed money. And when they take my car, I was broke. What else could I do? I was sick once. I stayed at All Saints. I knew where they kept their drugs, and I knew if I could get them, I could make some fast money. I didn't mean to hit the kid. I couldn't let him see me. He didn't have to be there, did he? He didn't have to be there. I sold old Bain that stuff. The rest of it is in the car, under the seat. I needed the money. I was broke. I was broke. You want to take him, Ben? I'll check him out with the company. Come on, Castle. That was a fine reading. I'm directing this picture. You the boy's agent? No, sir. Never heard him read better. Funny thing, though. No? Yeah? In front of the camera, he goes to the dogs. On January 28th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 91, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and convicted of first-degree burglary, one count, and violation of the State Narcotics Act, one count. Alfred Babe Kellogg was convicted of violation of the State Narcotics Act, one count. He is now serving his term in the state penitentiary.